Now, the must-see theatre show in Belfast this week tells the story of Frankie Valley and the Four Seasons. Jersey Boys is at the Grand Opera House, and that runs right through until the 22nd of September. And the cast join me now in the studio. Guys, welcome. Thanks, Thanks for, for having, having us. us. Yeah. And welcome to Belfast, I believe, for both of you. It's your first time here in the city, isn't it? Yeah, it's my first time here, and it's been a wonderful experience so far. I mean, we had our uh, first night on Tuesday, and uh, the crowds were uh, even better than expected. So it was a wonderful experience. I mean, we've really sold wonderfully here as well. So it was full houses. And I know everybody is still trying to get tickets for it. There are a few left, but only a few, isn't that correct? There's only a few. I mean, yeah, like Michael said, we have sold really well, but there are, there are tickets still available. Um, so there's always plenty of opportunity to come and, come and catch us before we go. We're here until the end of next week, um, until next Saturday. And, and yeah, like Michael said, the crowds here have just been fantastic. So it's a great opportunity to come and join the party. Now, Michael, you're playing the part of Frankie Valley, so there must be a lot of pressure on you playing this kind of iconic music legend. Yeah, I mean, because people hold um, their heroes like some, you know, people see Frankie Valley as their hero, you know, so they hold them in such high esteem that you feel you have to um, give your whole, your whole self to the show to, uh, to be the best you can be. So my work doesn't stop after I leave the stage, you know, it's like I have to make sure I look after myself, uh, as we all do, you know, uh, we make sure we stay hydrated, keep the voice in good check. And, but the thing is, is um, as I've been doing it longer and longer, it becomes even more of a joy. You know, I start to, uh, I really enjoy playing this part and I know exactly where I need to be to be able to give 100%. So it has been a, a real joy to come back to the show and tour with it. And uh, I just, I love playing the role. Were you a Frankie Valley fan before you came to the show? I think inadvertently I was, but not consciously. Because <laughs> I didn't actually know uh, them as the band, you know, and their songs, but I knew their songs through other ways, you know. And then when I saw the show for the first time in London, I literally went, oh, wow. And I, you know, to think, I think I was like 20 at the time, and I was doing my first ever time auditioning for the show. And uh, I thought, God, I've got to be in it. Yeah. And I thought that was my chance, because they seemed to like me, you know, they sent me to see the show, but. Uh, that wasn't my time then. And then when I did come back, it was for the right reasons. You know, I ended up getting to play the role eventually. So, What's your favourite song to sing in the show? Oh, there's so many, you know. It changes on, from night to night. Like, uh, I do, I love singing Begging because it, it has elements of music that I really loved growing up, like uh, Motown and, you know, that sort of funkiness. But then I also love singing... Um, Sherry and Big Girls with the other boys as well, you know, and we, we all get this such a massive response because it, co it comes at a point in the show where people are desperate to hear the songs. So when they do hear it, they're so excited, you know. And Frankie Valley has a very unusual voice as well. Was that similar <laughs> to yours or was it something you had to work on to get that sound? I think the luck was that I had uh, that potential in me, you know, and I had that voice there. What I did work on was trying to emulate more and more power into it, um, been able to do it every night in the show uh, consistently. That was where my work came. So my work came on more um, sustaining uh, the high standard every night, you know. Now you're playing the part of Tommy DeVito. Tell us about your character. Well, Tommy really, <clears throat> he kind of originated uh, the band, essentially. I mean, he's, uh, like he says, he's got a few years on the other boys, you know, and he, um, these guys grew up on the wrong side of the tracks, you know, they, they did a lot of bad stuff um, in and out of prison, you know, and, and basically Tommy kind of describes their life as, unless you find a way out, you're, but you're basically going to end up dead. You know, that's kind of how, how he describes it. So he has this drive and determination to succeed in any way he possibly can. Sometimes his methods aren't quite uh, as you would like them to be, um, but he does it all, I think, with the best of interest, you know, and, and so he creates band after band after band until eventually the one thing that clicks is when Joe Pesci introduces him to Bob Gordio, and then suddenly the writer-singer partnership develops, and then this band, the fourth season, takes flight, you know, so, so Tommy's kind of the engine uh, of, of the whole thing. Um, and he drives, uh, he drives it all through, and it's through his dogged determination, and then subsequently by, you know, the genesis of this amazing band being brought together, that they kind of hit the big time. I'm glad you mentioned Joe Pesci there, because yeah. this was Joe before Hollywood stardom hit, and he was basically hanging around with, with the Jersey Boys, wasn't he? Absolutely, you know, and it was a big surprise to me as well, you know, I suppose when anyone comes to see it, and there's a bit, you know, in the show where I 
kind of describe, explain that it is Joe Pesci. And, you know, you kind of sometimes people kind of go, hang on a second, I don't quite understand where that's come <laughs> from. You know, the guy from Goodfellas and all that stuff. But, um, yeah, he, he introduced these guys together, you know, and then, you know, obviously went off to have this amazing uh, film career. But he's a really big music buff, you know, and he, he loves his music. And, well, we thank him for... For the four seasons, I suppose. <laughs> and do you have a favourite song in the show? I've, uh, mine changes nightly almost. Um, but I do, I love singing Cry For Me because Cry For Me is the time when you see the four boys coming together for the first time and you hear that sound, you hear their harmonies and you understand why they're about to go stratospheric, you know. Um, Declan sings, sings it so amazingly. Um, and then when you add in the voices all around it, you know, we just had this amazing blend. And I think it is that moment, especially for the audience as well, they go, okay, now we're, now we're cooking. Now we know what we're about to expect. When Michael's, you know, he's talking about Sherry and big girls and walk like a man, you know what's coming, you know. So um, I love singing Cry For Me. Yeah. Brilliant. Guys, thank you for joining us and enjoy the rest of the run here in Belfast, okay? We're going to meet the other two uh, Four Seasons in just a second after we take a quick look at a clip from the show. So guys, welcome to Belfast. With a name like Declan, you must have some Irish blood somewhere in you. I think I do. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> my dad is actually from uh, Belfast. Um, he migrated to Australia when he was uh, 11 years old. And I grew up in Australia and recently came back and discovered this whole lovely extended Irish family. Um, but yeah, my dad is originally from Belfast. So it's good to be in Belfast. And it's, how do you find playing the Grand Opera House? It's amazing. Yeah, it's really amazing. It's I do actually consider Belfast to be a home away from home in a way because... You know, London's amazing, but it is a very hectic city and I don't really have any family there. So to come over here and have all of the extended family, um, it's, it's, it's amazing. And they all came on the opening night in, at the Grand Opera House and that was exceptional. And I, I think that they had a bit, of a, a, a bit of a doing in the fact that the crowd went wild. <laughs> and what's it like being on the road? How do you, all you guys get on? Are you all good friends? Yeah, we are. Like, we all, we, like... <laughs> It, you know, we all really get along. Um, I think you have to have a, a tight company that all really coexist because, you know, we're, we're constantly in each other's space, each other's time. Tell us about the character that you play in the show. Yeah, I play Bob Gordio. Um, he's the singer-songwriter of the group. Um, he basically had the, the Midas touch of everything. He kind of came in and wrote these songs like Sherry Big Girls Don't Cry, Walk Like a Man, and without his... Uh, songwriting and without his uh, what's that business-like uh, mentality I don't think that the group would have necessarily gotten to where they have gotten to that worldwide status of famous rock group. Yeah. Lewis tell us about your character in the show. Well I play Nick Massey um, and everybody would have their biased opinion of who they play I mean obviously Declan plays Bob who's the, the writer um, and Simon plays Tommy, who is the, as he says, the engine of the group. And Michael is Frankie, the voice. But um, I like to think as Nick, as a, a very integral linchpin of the, of the band, he doesn't say much, he doesn't do much. And it's basically, I try to portray him as, it's not what Nick says and does, it's what he doesn't say yeah. and doesn't do. Um, but without him, uh, you wouldn't have the four seasons as with any of the other three. But he uh, contributed a hell of a lot to the, to the group in, in terms of musicality. He, he had a, a fond affection through music with Bob um, and he was an incredible arranger. He just heard these harmonies and sounds that kind of become the, the Four Seasons, the, the sound that they developed. What's your favourite song in the show? Sophie's Choice, couldn't pick one. It's like picking your favourite <laughs> child. It's, uh, if I had to pick one, I would say Who Loves You? Uh, personally from a sentimental um, value because it was, it was my parents' song while they were dating. Right, So yes, I, get yeah. to, I get to perform that every night and think of mum and dad. 
Declan, were you a fan of Frankie Valli in the four seasons before you came to the show? I actually didn't really know their songs, like, and I actually didn't know the band that well. I went along and saw the show in Melbourne in like oh, 2009 or something, and I was more of a fan of musical theatre. So when I came along and saw the show and realised the hits that they have, like hit after hit after hit, mm. and also their story that they were involved with the mafia and that they, you know, just the, the scale of what that band went through and what they the success that they gained, I had no, no idea. I had no idea really about Frankie Valli Four Seasons. And you have a favorite song in the show? Oh, it always changes. I would probably say at the moment, uh, Oh, What a Night. I think it's just, it's, a, it's an amazing, um, uplifting number. And you know, everyone, it's, the, it's what we close the show with and everyone hops up to their feet and everyone's dancing, especially at the Grand Opera House. So. That's and they didn't nice. want it to end. The people were quite I happy know. standing there I when know. the lights came on and everything, weren't they? Yeah. <laughs> so guys, thank you for coming in and joining us. Enjoy the rest of your run in Belfast. It's on at the Grand Opera House until the 22nd of September.